What the fuck? Chat, ich habe heute äh, in meiner Timeline bei YouTube ein Video gesehen, wo Dan eine VR-Brille ausprobiert hat. Und scheinbar ist das wohl ziemlich krass. Und ich würde mir das gerne mal ansehen, um rauszufinden, ob das wirklich so krass ist. Weil ich habe ja wirklich vor... Vor vielen Jahren mal das ausprobiert mit einer VR-Brille. Das war ganz cool. Mal gucken, wie das denn am Ende wirklich ist. <lacht> das Video geht halt schon so geil los. <lacht> Hi, Dan. Oh. Hi, Dan. Was geht? Okay. Ich lass mich überraschen. Hey, guys. Alien Dan hier. If I... Oh, nee. Warte, ich will den hey, Ton. Guys, Alien also, Dan hier. Machen. If I wasn't a streamer and content creator, I would 100% switch to the Pimax Crystal in this video. I'll let you know why. Okay. W was ist das denn für eine... Wo kommt das so her? Usual ich kenne die first. Pimax did send me this headset for review. I can keep it for 90 days, test it, make the video, but then I'll have to send it back and that will be definitely hard. Might have to accidentally get lost in shipping or something because it's really, really good. I also have an affiliate link for the headset if you want to support the channel at no cost for you. That also gives you a $20 discount on the crystal once you pay your pre-order. So this is more like a first impression video. I've had it for about two weeks now. And me what? being relatively new to VR, I had to learn a lot of stuff, figure stuff out. I'm still not 100% there. I still need to learn a lot of things. But I wanted to make a first quick impression video. Talk about the features. 1600 Euro. Talk about what I like and what okay. I dislike. Mal gucken, was sie kann. Like no fancy B-roll video, just like me talking about it and showing you all the features. There's a feature called Dynamic Foveated Rendering. I hope I pronounced that correctly. That is absolutely a game changer, especially for ACC. But I will show you all these features in the game. Very quickly, the build quality, I think, is decent. I think for the price, it could maybe be a little bit better. It is a lot of plastic, it is heavy, and the buttons feel okay. But overall, it feels solid enough, and I don't see any issues using this, to be honest. One thing that is a bit weird, but apparently it is uh, because of a licensing issue with the chip they use in here, because this headset also works in standalone mode. Obviously, I haven't tried it. Okay, but cool. Even if you use it in your rig, you need to actually install this battery here. It lasts about five to six hours, according to Pimax. I haven't measured it. I've had no issue with battery life. It comes with two, so you can always switch around and have one fully charged. Um, but keep that in okay. mind that it is a battery powered headset. The installation process, very, very easy. You just install the Pimax Play software. This is how it looks like. The diagnose messages are insanely not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> because I had some issues first with the headset because I had my triples connected and the VR headset. I thought four outputs, that works fine. But uh, nope. The resolution then is actually too high. So I had to disable the side monitors in order for the VR headset to work. But the only error okay. I got was like update your GPU driver. That was not insanely helpful, but yeah. Installation is very, very easy. You basically just install the Pimax Play software. We are using a beta software here because uh, that one has eye tracking and the auto IPD adjustment enabled. But it's pretty much install the software and you're good to go. I've had no Oi. problems with this apart from that issue with the too high resolution with triples and VR connected. But apart from that, it has been perfectly fine. The Pimax Crystal okay. is probably the first VR headset where I did not put it on my eyes and be like, okay, it is a little bit pixelated. I wish I had my triples still here because there everything just looks sharper. This is, you don't, you don't really see any pixels. Like if you really, really, really want to see it and focus insanely hard, you can see the pixels still, but it's, it's comparable to these 1440p triples, I would say. It's insanely oui. nice. And the absence of that pixelated grid you typically see, it just makes it feel even more real, in my opinion. It also uses a QLED panel, I think, with local dimming and stuff. The colors look very nice. Contrast is great. The blacks are really dark. I don't think it's OLED, but it kind of looks close to that, I would say. The sharpness and resolution, according to Pimax, is 35 PPD pixels per degree. And like I said, I don't really see any pixels while using that. FOV, I don't have a lot of experience. I know the HP Reverb Gen 2. I would say this has a slightly higher FOV, but you definitely still get this helmet feeling when you wear it. So... Your view is not limited by your eyes, but you see some black borders at the end of your visual field. I absolutely don't think that is a problem at all. If you like the FOV of something like the HP Reverb, this is slightly bigger, I would say. So you will be fine. It feels basically like wearing a racing helmet while driving, so it might... 
ich hatte noch nie einen auf. Ich habe keine Ahnung, wie schwer die Dinger sind, weil die äh, damals die erste Oculus Rift, die ich ausprobiert hatte, oder die ich auch besitze, die war wirklich nach einer Weile, hat es sich dann doch ein bisschen gestört. Actually, improve your immersion. I've had no complaints about the FOV. When testing it in a flight simulator, I wished the FOV was maybe a bit bigger, but yeah. Okay, a few words about the benchmark system here. We are using a 4090 GPU and a 13900K. I probably should put the X3D 7950X in this system, but I haven't done that yet. But I would assume it would perform even better with that CPU because we are in many cases CPU bottlenecked in sim racing. I'm going to show you iRacing and ACC. The headset itself is set to 120 hertz. That's I've great. had zero problems with that. Apparently, according to the website, there's also a 144 and 165 hertz mode in testing, but I don't have access to that. The backlight, I like to run at around 90. Okay. Uh, it's insanely bright, so with the eyes <laughs> setting, it's almost a pain in your eyes. If you, for example, if you drive through a tunnel and then you get out of the tunnel again, you look into the sun, it's almost blinding you. So I turned this down a little bit. Then I have eye tracking enabled. And the auto IPD adjustment, pretty convenient. It's shot. Ja, Brillenträger mal wieder so. Ach ja, mal wieder ein Feature, was nicht für uns ist. Going 58 here, but when I set it up, it's typically 59.2, 59.5. And then for the render quality, what we are running today will be the custom setting at one. So we are rendering the full resolution, but no oversampling because that resolution is already high enough. Then smart smoothing, I have disabled. Didn't really notice a big difference to be honest and the rest is pretty much default but i would say we'll start with eye racing and i'll show you the performance and talk a little bit about my impressions in that game also the settings we are using openxr this thing is fully compatible with openxr there's also a new version of the openxr toolkit i think 0.4 that enabled the eye tracking i think for the public use currently the eye tracking is not enabled in the software yet I do have access to it. Pimax was so kind to give me access to that. And it works fine. I Warte mal, du hast in der Brille Eye-Tracking drin? I'll show you how to use it, what Ui. it's doing. It's very, very nice to see because you can basically make the the stuff you're not looking at black and then you see what's happening there. But I would say we'll help into the sim. We're gonna do LMP3 at most board because that's the combination I've been driving this week. So just convenient. Okay, so when I actually put this On. Wait, you don't see the overlay, no. It basically tells me how I need to put the headset on. So for example, now it's relatively high, so it tells me I should put it lower. And then until, okay. now it says okay, I hold it there for a second. Then it adjusts the eye distance automatically. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then we are good to go. I just need to see that I select the correct mirror here. Because we have the mirror from the OpenXR toolkit, where you can also see... Uh, the menu and then this is basically the eye racing mirror kind of looks horrible but it is what it is and then this is basically just what the left eye is seeing so as you can see here there's also the the fps and stuff oh, that's and i want to show you the menu if i go here that's true this is the open xr toolkit menu so you can see what i'm doing there wait first i'll show you the options here just so that you see what i'm using for graphic settings. We do have pit objects and grandstands set to low detail. Apart from that, I'm pretty much using whatever I'm using on my triple screens. I do have the shadow maps and cloud shadows turned off because that costs a lot of performance with not a lot of visual gain. I typically run that on off on my triples now as well. Then we do render for cockpit mirrors, no virtual mirror. Heat haze because it looks pretty when it's warm and yeah. But now we'll switch to this so that you can see the mirror. Yeah. As you can see, FPS, we are at 80, 90 now because we are CPU bottlenecked, like I said, with the 7950X3. Es ist super unangenehm, das zu streamen. Es ist katastrophal, das zu streamen als Content Creator. It's probably better. Um, but these are the settings that I'm using right now. So I do use the NIS upscaler set to 75%. Nee, es geht, äh, es geht nicht darum, das zu, für den Stream darzustellen, sondern weil da so viel Bewegung drin ist und das ist unglaublich unschön, das anzuschauen. Da drinnen sitzen und das Fahren ist unglaublich geil. Total toll, das zu streamen. Mm. 
So we are getting 90 FPS here on iRacing. We can turn down some settings to get the full 120. But this looks fine to me. Honestly, if I wasn't streaming, I think for streaming VR is not good because you see the the captured image just doesn't look very nice and it's a little bit, I don't know. I don't really like looking at VR streams, so I'm also not going to stream in VR, but if I was not doing this whole thing, 100% I would switch to that. The visual quality that I'm seeing here is absolutely amazing. I do get higher FPS when I'm not recording because OBS is stealing a little bit of power here, but I was not hitting the full 120. I was at around 110, 15 maybe. But that is good enough, in my opinion. You can also go to the 90 FPS mode. Then you have a higher headroom available. And I think the difference between 90 and 120 FPS is not insanely big. It is noticeable, but I would probably just run it in 100, uh, in 90 frames mode on a on a daily basis. But yeah, the it's it's so much like VR. Also zum Zugucken ist das übel stressig durch das ganze Gebacke. VR, you need to do it. It's hard to describe. It's it feels like you're sitting in the car. And with this visual quality, I don't know. Like my issue with VR in the past has always been that it feels the graphics just didn't look as nice. But here with this resolution, I mean, if I look at the, ste at the steering wheel here, everything is so crystal clear. Crystal clear. Yeah, get it. Wait, where's my... There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would definitely, definitely switch to that. I d I'm not faster with it, mainly because I'm used to monitors. Um, when I tested this and wasn't like driving and playing around and stuff, I was like two to three tenths of my monitor time because the braking points just feel different. But if I was using this regularly, um, I'm pretty sure that the lap time would just be the same or maybe even better than using monitors. And especially when you're close to other cars, it's just very, very nice to be able to, to look to your side and you just have a better spatial awareness of what's going on around you. One downside, this headset is freaking huge. And you can see I'm using a, a seat with these oh, ears. So I, I can't really look that much to the left and right because I'm just like hitting the ears. So if you want to get something like the Pimax, I would recommend get a seat without these ears. I mean, it makes no sense anyways for sim racing. Don't ask me why I have this. Um, but yeah, this is just something to consider. But yeah, on iRacing, the DFR does not make a big difference. If I go to off here and on, you can see the frame rate is pretty much the same because we are just CPU bottlenecked. There's ja. nothing we can... Also, da drin, da drinne sein, ne? also, ich hatte damals, also, ich habe auch immer noch eine äh, Oculus Rift, also, eine, die erste, und das war schon cool, es war pixelig und irgendwie schwer auf dem Kopf, aber wenn jetzt die, das Bild einfach schon mittlerweile besser ist, kann ich mir schon vorstellen, dass das sehr cool ist und auch sehr geil. Nur halt zum Stream fahren für den gemeinen Zuschauer ist das nicht gut. Das ist keine tolle Experience. 90 FPS Mode, I see absolutely no problem. With, 120, uh, with 120 FPS Mode, you will definitely have to tweak your settings a little bit. Play around. Ja gut, aber es hat ja auch nur nicht jeder so einen Rechner wie du, Dan. Also... Da müsste man vielleicht nochmal direkt gucken, was die für eine, für eine um, Auslastung hat oder was recommended ist, also empfohlen. With the upscaler and the native rendered resolution, stuff like that. And I'm sure like once I use this for a longer time, I will find ways to optimize the performance more. Like I said, I'm just losing VR for like two weeks now. And I'm not the most knowledgeable person when it comes to this. And especially iRacing is just weird when it comes to performance. All right, uh, the settings I'm using is pretty much the VR high preset. The only thing that I did was uh, contact shadows set to enabled, view distance high. 
And then I turned down the VR pixel density because then it's probably oversampling. Uh, das sieht schon wieder, also wisst ihr, was ich meine? So diese ganze Bewegung. Also Menschen sind ja grundsätzlich nie still. Also selbst die stillsten Menschen bewegen sich. Und du hast im Kopf, hast du immer Bewegung drin, schon durchs Reden, Mimik und Gestik. Und das siehst du alles in dem Headset drin. Das ist wirklich, also es ist unglaublich toll, das zu fahren. Es ist wirklich unfassbar geil, das zu fahren, wenn der Stream nicht an ist. Oder du Videos aufnimmst. Also das hat ja gerade jemand schon geschrieben, dass es da wohl ein extra Tool gibt, das irgendwie das Shaken rauszunehmen. Aber ich denke, selbst der krasseste Stabilisator kriegt halt solche Bewegungen nicht, äh, raus. Ne? Und selbst Dan, jetzt bei Dan ist ja noch krasser, weil der hat ja dann noch eine, ähm, der hat ja noch ein Motion unten drunter. Pff, das ist schon wild. And then we are upscaling and I just set this to 100%. That looked good. And as you can see here, while we are sitting in the pits with DFR on, again, it looks horrible on the screen recording. But if you're wearing the headset, you do not see a difference between the foveated rendering enabled and disabled with the eye tracking. And in terms of performance, I will show you the correct window here. So get into the Pimax, OpenMax R thing mirror. So this is with foveated rendering enabled. And if we turn it off, I mean, we still get the 120 FPS here sitting in the pits, but you see the GPU headroom is 15%. And with it on, it's actually 21. So it gives a performance boost without costing anything, pretty much. And I mean, when you're just sitting here. Alone on track. The game can handle it, no problem, from 20 oh, FPS. Yeah. But if you're actually doing a race, Then, oh yeah, well, haven't driven ACC in quite a while. If you're actually doing a race, then uh, your performance headroom is actually shrinking quite a bit. You will drop below 120 FPS, even with the DFR enabled, in very rare scenarios. Let me actually, like, I'll boot up an AI race, so... AI with 30 drivers, probably at night, because that's the most taxing on ACC, I think. And I will show you the FPS numbers. But something that I need to say, it looks so freaking amazing. ACC in VR is supposed to look ho Wait, I'll turn off the DFR so it actually looks a little bit... <laughs> a little bit amazing for you as well, maybe. It's probably very hard to see on that VR mirror. But everything is so incredibly sharp. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen ACC so sharp, even on monitors. Das sieht richtig. Also it, it, selbst ich jetzt von hier auf meinem Bildschirm sehe den Unterschied. You know, ACC always has that problem that it's slightly blurry in the distance. Yeah. For whatever reason, with this, it's just not the case. It looks. It looks like a different game, honestly. It's really, really ich finde es geil, dass seine Handschuhe einfach wie Strümpfe sind und bis zum Ellbogen gehen. <lacht> also nicht die von Dan, sondern von dem Fahrer nice, entgegen. It's not even close to the experience of triples. It's you have this in the car feeling and the high resolution and everything. You can probably tell I'm insanely, insanely uh, impressed by this headset. It's just, oh my God. Let's just blame that I don't have a setup loaded, okay? <lacht> It's bonk. The bonk. It's yeah. I, I, you can, you can tell. I, I don't really have words for it. And again, I have to <laughs> say that several times because I know people will be like, "Oh my God, this looks so horrible." The pixels that you see now because I'm recording this at the, the outer edge of the picture. I don't see that because we have eye tracking. I always see a very sharp render of everything. So, yeah, it's just, it's free performance at no cost, pretty much, because it's, it's not noticeable, not at all. It's also very amazing on Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm not going to show you that now because 
There are enough Flight Simulator VR guys that, that will talk about this, but in Microsoft Flight Simulator I get a boost of like 60 to 80, 90 FPS using Epic Settings with this PC, with using the DFR. Oh, and this is, wirklich, dieses Bewegen, das macht einen so nervös, also so aggressiv nervös. Und da kann, da kann kein Mensch was dafür, weil du diese Bewegung ja immer drin hast. Aber es ist wirklich so, es macht einen aggressiv, das zu gucken. I think it's, I hate that word, but it's a game changer for VR to have the DFR working. So yeah, I would say that's pretty much it for the video. Maybe you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Bye bye. Tschüss, Dan. So, aber jetzt nochmal kurz ein Follow-up, weil genau das hier, das ist das ist aus der Brille. What the fuck? Und hier müssen wir ja noch abziehen, dass er da scheinbar, dass er auch irgendwie Film mit einem, da muss ja irgendwas dazwischen sein. Also es sind ja immer noch nicht die Augen. Das äh, würde ich auch ausprobieren, bin ich ehrlich. Also das würde ich definitiv ausprobieren. Das sah richtig gut aus. Tut mir gefallen, Leute. Haut da mal einen Daumen drauf äh, bei Dan und äh, abonniert Dan. Das ist wirklich ein unglaublich, unfassbar toller und netter Typ. Kann ich jedem nur wärmstens empfehlen. Spretzelhoff. Krass. Da würde ich auch echt nochmal überlegen, äh, mir das anzugucken. Für, wie gesagt, für den Stream ist so... Äh, ja. Aber so selber würde ich da, glaube ich, auch drin sitzen. Wobei ich auch immer noch nicht so... Äh, ich bin mir immer noch nicht so sicher, was das für Langzeitfolgen hat. Also, wie... Äh, ich stelle mir das irgendwie auch nicht so geil vor, weil man den Körper ja immer irgendwas vorgaukelt. Wobei, wenn du nachher Motion hast, dann, dann geht's ja eigentlich. Dann merkst du ja eigentlich alles, ne? Irgendwie. Äh, 1,6 kostet das. 1600 Euro. Das ist schon sportlich, du. Aber geil.